Well, the impetus for me going to uh, an eye care professional stemmed from a morning wake up where I woke up and there were blotches in front of my eyes. It looked like a Rorschach test, like, you know, ink blots, and it scared the living daylights out of me. I mean, you know, I thought I was going to go blind. <laughs> uh, I freaked out. I mean, the idea of being blind is just, you know, it's a totality, if you know what I mean. And when I experienced that that morning, uh, I was, like I said, horrified. But more than that, I didn't know if it was fixable. When I was younger, I remember seeing horror movies, and one of the horror movies, they would put things in people's eyes, you know, like pins or needles or whatever. And now I'm actually going to have to get a needle into my eye. And not only do I have to get it, but it's going to have to be every single month. It's not something you look forward to. I like to do things with my life. And what I don't put on my list is, gee, I really want to go to the doctor. I would have to come to the eye doctor every two weeks or four weeks or so, uh, depending on, on how bad the condition was at the time. You know, they do the scans and they see what happens and they tell you what, when they want you to come back. Persistent DME is fluid that persists on exam or OCT testing in spite of multiple prior treatments for diabetic macular edema, such as monthly anti vegf injections or recommended prior treatments uh, that don't happen because of missed appointments or other reasons. In these cases, I think these patients would benefit from a continuous microdose therapy such as Alluvian because it continues to release fluencetonone acetonide over up to a three-year period, which allows a therapy uh, for the patient, even if they're missing their appointment due to hospitalizations, dialysis, or if there's a snowstorm and weather prevents them from coming in. These are the type of patients that are very common among my DME population that would certainly benefit from Alluvian. When Dr. Kiernan told me about the possibility of this injection and what it does in a sense like a seed that's planted into your eye that releases the drug over time, something that I would run to and that's what I did. I'm an avid reader that would be cut out. I'm an avid fisherman that might be cut out. Certainly can't drive anywhere. Uh, the ability to take care of myself on a regular basis, to go up and down stairs, to do laundry, to cook a meal, would be not only greatly diminished, probably eliminated. That is a lifestyle change that I don't think anyone can grasp. Just a horrible idea, and I, I would do anything I could to avoid it. Since then, with the Alluvian, I've had to go, you know, every few months, every two or three months, I go in, get a checkup, see what the scan says. If the edema is still in, in control, uh, I go on my merry way. The difference that the, the Alluvian has made in my life is that it's been a year and a half since I've had to have an injection. I'm glad the Alluvian is given to me. Indication, Illuvian, fluocinolone acetonide intravitreal implant, 0.19 milligrams, is indicated for the treatment of diabetic macular edema, DME, in patients who have been previously treated with a course of corticosteroids and did not have a clinically significant rise in intraocular pressure. Contraindications, Illuvian is contraindicated in patients with active or suspected ocular or periocular infections, including most viral diseases of the cornea and conjunctiva, including active epithelial herpes simplex keratitis, dendritic keratitis, vaccinia, varicella, mycobacterial infections, and fungal diseases. Alluvian is contraindicated in patients with glaucoma who have cup to disc ratios of greater than 0.8. Alluvian is contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to any components of this product. Warnings and precautions. Intravitreal injections, including those with alluvian, have been associated with endophthalmitis, eye inflammation, increased intraocular pressure, and retinal detachments. Patients should be monitored following the intravitreal injection. Use of corticosteroids, including alluvian, may produce posterior subcapsular cataracts, increased intraocular pressure, and glaucoma. Use of corticosteroids may enhance the establishment of secondary ocular infections, 
due to bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Corticosteroids are not recommended to be used in patients with a history of ocular herpes simplex because of the potential for reactivation of the viral infection. Patients in whom the posterior capsule of the lens is absent or has a tear are at risk of implant migration into the anterior chamber. Adverse reactions. In controlled studies, the most common adverse reactions reported were cataract development, Illuvian 82%, sham 50%, and intraocular pressure elevation of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters of mercury, Illuvian 34%, sham 10%.